Christians were told by Jesus time and time again that if we try to follow in God's way, we'll take heat for it. And so we ought to look on the heat right now as a blessing, a sign that the church might be up to something new. Let's, let's praise God, not for the pain, but, but for the, the possibility that comes out of conflict. I think the Archbishop of Canterbury has gotten it exactly right. Exactly right in calling the bishops to look at all of the issues that face the world. A, a world in pain, a world in hunger, a, a, a world at odds with itself. And has called upon the bishops to focus on all of those things before they get to the topic of human sexuality. That is exactly right because you know what? This issue that has been raised to an unprecedented level above all that we believe together belongs in its rightful and secondary place. Now, it, it, it has a special place in the hearts of those who are gay and lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, but that's okay. That's okay because all of us know that the fear that grips the world is so much more important. And we'll get to the human sexuality, sexuality issue in our own time. And we will raise it in all the right places and in all the right ways. Remembering that God, in God's time, will bring all of us to the center. None of us will be marginalized. None of us will be pushed to the side ever again. And in the meantime, we can focus on that hope and that promise. There are a lot of people fearful about the homosexual agenda. Right here in historic St. Mary's Church, Putney, tonight I am going to divulge the homosexual agenda. <laughs> it is Jesus. This homosexual's agenda, and that of many of my brother and sister, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people, is Jesus. And let me tell you why. Because the Jesus I know in my life, who communicates God's unwavering love for me, has brought me such joy, such fullness, such wholeness in my life, and in my relationships, how could I not talk about it? People want to know what I'm going to talk about at Lambda. And they seem shocked when I say, I'm going to talk about God. I don't know what they're going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about God. You know, it reminds me of the time I was early in recovery. And I had been at the House of Bishops meeting all day long, and I was going off to an AA meeting, grateful that I would actually get to go someplace where they talked about God. <laughs> you need, and I need, to learn to tell the story of our own salvation at the hands of a loving and gracious God. I don't know what the thing is in your life, or maybe several things, that cause you to feel less than worthy, cause you to feel further away from God, or perhaps the church or your parents or someone has told you that you are not worthy of God's love. Whatever thing that is, God is ready to heal it in you. And God didn't heal me of my homosexuality. That was not my sin. But you know what? I am just as self-absorbed and sinful and frail and fallible as the next person. And the God of all that is, in this miraculous way, reached out and let me know that although, yes, quite true, I am not unworthy, I am made worthy by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and through his life, death, and resurrection, eternal life and the abundant life on this earth are available to me. 
and to all of you. If you will but reach out. You know, I, I don't know what the custom is here in, in uh, Britain, but where I grew up in Kentucky, in a very small, fundamentalist, rural congregation of tobacco farmers, we would go to revivals every August, and for two solid weeks, every night, we would sit in, in heat that you could not imagine. And the only thing that got us through hours of preaching and singing and altar calls that went on until I think people gave themselves to Christ just to get out of it. <laughs> those evenings, we were given fans. I see some of you using the programs that way. Well, our fans, our fans came from the local funeral home. <laughs> and almost always, they had an icky, sweet picture of Jesus on the front, blonde hair, blue eyed, looking nothing like a Jew, <laughs> standing and knocking at a heart-shaped door. And I, I think I first knew I was gay when I found that so tacky. <laughs> I did some research on that painting, and you know what? There's only a handle on one side of that door. It's on the inside. This God of ours loves us so and respects us so. This God would not push a door down, but waits to be invited in. And as much as I hated that fan when I was growing up, you know what? I think it is exactly right. This God of ours wants a relationship with each one of us and is there at the door of your heart and mine 24-7 wanting in and respects us so much that this God waits for us to open the door. And when we do, we find a life so amazing, so amazing. That's the story we have to tell. That's the only sermon I have to preach. That's the story I want to take with me to the land of the conference. This discussion of homosexuality that we're having in the church is, is not so significant because of, of what it says about homosexuality, but what it says about God. Listen to the arguments being made about homosexuality and ask yourself, what, what picture of God, what image of God do you get when you hear those words? When someone stands up and reaffirms that Leviticus says that homosexuals are an abomination before God. Does that make you want to get to know God better? When the church treats women and gays like second-class citizens, does that make you want to run your local Anglican church to get to know God better? When we constantly feed people the bread of anxiety rather than the bread of life, does it make you believe in God's love more? You and I need to be out there telling the world that is desperate to hear it. That the God of all that is loves them beyond their wildest imagining, and we know it because we have experienced it. It is the only thing that will change their hearts. It is the only reason they will ever have to pull open the door and let God in. The daughter of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, her name is Impo, tells a wonderful story on her mother-in-law. It seems that there was another brother in the family who was dating a, uh, a young woman, and, and uh, the, the family actually didn't like her much. Didn't think she was quite up to the task of of uh, being this son's girlfriend. And they'd had a particularly difficult uh, visit from her, and the family was kind of torn up about it, and, and the mother goes to bed and, and, and prays about it.